We're here at ITU Telecom World 2012 and I'm very pleased to be joined by Margaret Budenda who is the Director General of the Zambia ICT Authority. Margaret, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me. I'd like to start off by talking to you about the great transformations that they've been in the ICT sector and what that means for Zambia. Firstly, um, I think that just sitting here and you know participating in this particular forum gives you the impression that the world has actually become global and that we don't have barriers. So as a developing country, being found in an environment where we can actually integrate with developed countries, you get impressed and you get the idea that you have the chance to catch up with everybody else. So what do I think about the transition? I think it's a fantastic opportunity for Zambia. Um, we are trying to acclimatize with what is happening in the advanced countries. We're trying to ensure that our um, investment in our infrastructure and ICT is upped. We're trying to ensure that we have a legal framework that supports investment and we're also trying to ensure that the government is supportive of a market that will actually guarantee a return on investment. And what are the challenges facing you in this? Access to money. Um, as a developing country, uh, we have limited funds from the central treasury and more often than not, governments will prioritize what they want to allocate money to. Health is number one. Uh, food security is number two, national security number three. So when you have a hierarchy of all these things that government must fulfill on behalf of the people, ICT goes to the bottom of the list. However, ICT is the backbone of any economic drives that will actually see growth. But usually most countries become very desperate and what they want to do is quick wins. And the quick wins are if I can build hospitals, put doctors there and put medicine, it's easier. But if I put computers and I can't take people to the hospital, they don't see the correlation. But thank God things are changing because of the interactions. Most of our leaders are interacting with other international leaders and they're able to see the benefits. And so the biggest challenge that we currently have is just access to funds. So what's Zambia's vision or response to addressing the ICT issues? Our vision is to have a fully connected country. We're a vast, uh, geographically we're a huge country, 750,000 square kilometers, and that's huge. And our uh, habitation is always very sparsely spread out. So you have small communities of our large areas. And so developing an infrastructure like uh, having deployment of network, you know, through the deployment of communication towers, requires a lot of money and investment and also building a backbone like uh, optic fiber infrastructure is also requires a lot of money. We are landlocked. Because we are landlocked it means we need to work through our neighboring countries to get to the sea uh, undersea cables and so our vision is to ensure that we get as many partners on board as possible to try and help us achieve that dream. What we want to do is have every community, every village connected. Every child must be able to have access to information and school every woman access to health, uh, be able to have an environment or at least access comfortable health facilities. Because of our geographical spread, we don't see this happening if we don't invest in infrastructure and ICT. And in terms of where we are at the moment, ITU Telecom World 2012, there's all sorts of things happening around us here. But I wanted to ask you about the conversations that you've been having here. How useful have they been to helping you achieve your goals? Fantastic. Uh, they've been very useful. With suppliers, you get newer technology which is cheaper to deploy to solve most of our problems. That's been very good as well. At this particular uh, world conference, um, we've had a lot more people coming up with cheaper ways of filling in those gaps that distance uh, gives a lot of money to. The second thing we've also come up with is that there are newer and better ways of doing things like addressing national um, cyber security issues. We've had more players on the market sharing more ideas and so you get to learn the do's and don'ts before you get to fall in the pitch, so that's been very exciting. ITU have got a Saving Lives Pavilion here, which is looking at emergency telecommunications. How important are emergency telecommunications to Zambia? Emergency telecommunication is very important to us. We've been a beneficiary of the ITU emergency telecommunication equipment. We had a flood in Zambia that had displaced a lot of families, and ITU came to the rescue. Um, we in Zambia hold 40% of the water in the region, and sometimes due to climate changes, we get floods, and these floods affect people in the rural areas who don't have access to communication and so facilities or equipment like the emergency telecommunication becomes very key because we're able to deploy it and reach uh, several people out there. Margaret, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Thank you for inviting me.